Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the sessions uh, we've had till now. Uh, quite a few enlightening ones, to, uh, so to say. But I promise you that this session which is going to happen will be as exciting as it can get. Because the topic is obviously a very hot one. Uh, you know, everybody when the uh, agenda was announced came to me and spoke to me about, you know, uh, uh, saying that, boss, this topic is going to be very, very exciting for all of us and we are all looking forward to hear from industry experts who are sitting out here. All three of them are distinguished professionals who have seen the television industry growth for such a long time. And uh, all of us, including me, will be extremely excited to learn and uh, know their thoughts on the television growth ahead. Also, before starting the session, I must say uh, that it is very rare that you get Star, Z, and Sony on one platform. Actually, thank you for that. I think only Pitch Madison will be able to do it. Uh, I hope the stage withstands the weight of these three people. Uh, jumping directly into this session, uh, sorry, before that, I would just like to thank uh, all three of you again. I'll start directly with uh, pretty much what the title of the session is, uh, the TV growth. Fortunately, we have seen uh, today that many people touched upon the topic about TV strength. Mr. Puri spoke about how, you know, brands have effectively utilized television. Mr. Batra spoke about how uh, outside numbers, brands have utilized television, etc. But it'll be great to know from these three people what stands as, uh, 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 what stands in terms of future for this industry. Because we've seen a steady increase in the television ad revenue for the past many years uh, now. While the growth has kind of tapered down, but I would say, you know, uh, that's just a blip, uh, hopefully, uh, for the television industry and I would like to learn from them uh, that in the future how are they planning to grow the television ad revenue we can start with uh, Amrita and sure thank you and uh, thanks Sam thanks uh, Vikram and I'm all to get for bringing all of us together and like you said this is the first time I think you know we're sharing a uh, platform so on the question that I'm all asked how do we see uh, the future for television and the continued growth. I would put it in, in two parts. One from a demand perspective and the other from a supply point of view. Television, as all, you, all of you know, today reaches out to about 210 million households in the country, which roughly translates to about 900 million people, which is by far the largest medium that you can have in the country. And Despite its reach of 210 million homes, it still covers only two-thirds of the country. What it means is there is another 30 percentage or 33 percentage that gives us huge headroom for growth. And I think as broadcasters, our focus will be in the future to build our penetration in those segments. And as consumption grows, demand will follow. And there is another side to the demand. If you look at Indian addicts, the Indian addicts ratio to the GDP is just about 0.3 percentage. And if you look at any developed economies, it is in the range of 0.7 to 1.5 percentage. Even if you were to compare it with comparable economies, it's much, much higher than India. So in the coming years, Media addicts is expected to have a dramatic growth. And hence, keeping in mind these two as aspects, television is expected to grow, uh, also grow in double digits. So, uh, Amul, I'll take the liberty of, before giving you the exact answer, uh, giving a little bit of a prelude to it. Uh, day before yesterday, there was a news that uh, the single biggest deal in the history of aviation was done in the country and uh, there are 470 aircrafts which are going to be bought. Uh, India is the second largest economy as far as uh, the road transport is concerned. The total number of uh, roads which are getting built every day is about 50 kilometer. 5.6 million kilometers of road are getting built. One small data point is that uh, uh, 2019, there were about uh, 324 per second UPI transactions. 
in 2022 it's 2438 it's doubling every year year on year uh, i would really want to extend uh, what sam was talking about in his presentation that it is india shining it's absolutely india shining and if that be so the context is that uh, everybody sitting in this room will see the best of their times in their careers in the years to come. It's not about TV, it's not about digital, it's about everybody will see a great time uh, around. What uh, Amrita was talking about, I completely resonate with her. That it's 0.3% of the GDP. I mean, when India is going to grow so exponentially, when aviations, uh, I mean, seven years back, we were 74 airports in the country. Today, we are 147. In three years, we sh in three to four years, we will be about 200 airports in the country with about 10x growth in the number of air flyers every day. Now, which country in the world will talk about that kind of growth? So there can't be any better narrative for anybody and everybody sitting in this uh, room. Everybody will be benefited. One more data point on that is that in my father's generation, uh, if Colgate will come with an ad, they will take about 10 years to set that context up. Uh, in my generation, LG will take about five, six years to set a narrative. Uh, my daughter's generation, it will be about a Vivo will take two, th six months about to set a, launch a new platform or non launch a new uh, phone. In today's generation, with the new millennials coming in, it's brands want to become a household name overnight. Now, for becoming a household name overnight, whether it's a tradi traditional brand and uh, uh, Vikram will understand that what I'm talking about, whether it's a Govardhan, he's of the world and brilliantly fantastic job done uh, Vikram on that. I mean, somebody who would not spend uh, a penny on television and Madison could see a great amount of insight on that and build that up and build a huge platform to make a, becoming a substantial player for our ecosystem. There are brands who need a narrative. There are brands who need a story. And what better medium than anybody and everybody sitting in this room on telling those stories. So there is a great, there is a great future for all of us. Uh, the only thing, there is a word of caution. Uh, there is something which is called uh, confirmation bias. A lot of time when we see these kind of numbers and we see, uh, and I primarily feel, my personal view is, people who are selling TV and people who are selling digital, they see TV as perishing. Rest everybody, whether you talk about media planners and multiple times I've had these chats with Vikram, uh, in their media planning mix and uh, when Nagaraj was presenting this, absolutely, absolutely you could figure out that there is so much of potential in it, you can't do without a TV. So I guess there can't be a better narrative, there can't be a better story tell, there can't be a better time in our careers on it. Uh, the last piece which I will talk about, which Nagaraj touched about and Sam touched about, which is a very, very critical piece. It's a generation or it's a change of course in my mind from TV versus digital to TV and digital. So the most important concept is the word in between, which is and and not or. So that's what my view would be. Uh, good evening, everyone. And let me first welcome each one of you who's come here to hear us. Uh, so thank you very much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Vikram. And welcome to my panelists here. And thank you, Anmol, for me, uh, having me here. I would be mostly summing up if I'm the last. So I'm, mostly my other panelists have already mentioned very, very vital points as far as the, you know, as far concerning the future growth of television is concerned. Yes, economy is growing uh, despite, you know, uh, the world threatening to go into a recession, we are still projecting 6.5% uh, GDP growth, which is a great story. And that shows that the Indian consumer and the habits of Indian consumer are slightly different than what possibly is there in, you know, across the world. Uh, and that shows uh, from the way we create you know, content in this country. Now, if you ask me what is the future of the growth uh, for a linear TV because TV is I think becoming a bastardized word today because it's uh, it's about watching content or you know watching information 
and there are multi platforms which are emerging so obviously there will be an and world as you know uh, right now you said aapna sandeep said uh, the but uh, as us as broadcaster we have to look at our business and when we as broadcasters see obviously uh, we are content creators linear tv is another medium for us but uh, said so linear tv is the most important and very critical medium for us for growth and it uh, currently the revenues for any broadcaster is about of 80% coming from the you know linear business so hence very important for us to uh, you know keep growing it and at the same time even keep protecting it so i think the challenges are for the broadcaster or the linear tv stakeholders i would say you know to grow this future all this external environment is there to help us but what we need to do as you know we also have to sit back and think that what we as broadcasters or who are content creators or who are i would say linear tv stakeholders what they need to do to continue to have a future growth in this there is a opportunity to growth of tv sets as samrita mentioned we are just 70% penetrated so hence that growth will come and affordable tvs are being available in across the country you know there are more and more uh, linear options coming through uh, yesterday only uh, anurag thakur mentioned that he's going to put in all the tv sets uh, the you know the tuner which will have a direct satellite so that will increase the consumption of you know tv at homes so uh, that is one but most importantly i think content creation and the distribution of content on linear medium is going to be the key and thirdly the uh, other important point is the measurement today i still feel that bark needs to you know put it acts together and needs to do lot many things than what they are doing right now uh if i mention about cricket or any other opportunities which are today and, and you have a very you know hotly debated topic coming forward about ipl my point of view is tv uh, the consumption of cricket or uh, you know on linear tv is still going to be much higher reason being what we are monitoring is at home right now there is a huge amount of viewership which is coming out of home on large screen tvs what digital is going to propel is an additional amount of viewership through small uh, you know mobile phones or small handsets and that's where so catch up is going to happen if i am not at home i will watch it on my phone but if i am at home i'm definitely going to watch it on my tv so then that is what i mean you know nagraj made a very uh, you know valid point here today that integrated media solution has to be there for brands so that is more from a media planning perspective and that pie has to come to linear tv as well so how will linear tv will sustain its consumer because consumer is sitting in the middle of everything as long as linear tv is able to reach to the consumer as entertaining it them it's going to grow and uh, there are many uh, phases to that i mean it is going to why everywhere else in the world your linear tv coming to your home was more expensive than the digital uh, or the ott options which came in india it's reverse you know india the linear tv opportunity or your cable bill is still not more than 300 bucks whereas if i aggregate all the ott options put together they still cross more than 650 to 680 if i take netflix at 199 bucks from a per month perspective so obviously and then there is data consumption over and above that so there is a huge bill which is going from the pockets of the consumer we have uh, you know only what i don't know the exact number of tax payer but i think it's only 5% to 10% people in the country who pay tax right i mean they are the one who have discretionary income but there is a huge amount of population who's looking for entertainment where will they go they have to go on to linear tv because that's what they can afford right now and uh, lastly i would say uh, you know content creation uh, or i would say the content the way it has been on linear tv especially in the entertainment side 
there is two vast difference here. On linear TV, you continue to see uh, fiction shows which are long drawn, which you can't, you know, binge watch. And why do people still continue to watch that, especially females? It's because they're following characters. You know, there's a huge influencer economy which is emerging. But the biggest influencer is sitting on linear TV. They are every day influencing you. They are every day female is following that consumer, uh, sorry, that character. And that is why they're not there for stories. Whereas the OTT is bringing you a content where the hero is the story, the script, not the character. So there is a vast difference of content creation which is happening across both the mediums. Hence, this content will, will be the mainstay of having, a, or I would say differentiating between the two consumers. And I think that is what will propel, you know, TV growth in future. Distribution is key. Cable TV guys and DTH have to, you know, get their act together and possibly fight uh, the other mediums or the uh, other platforms. I think they need to become a little more accountable. Infrastructure uh, investment has to be there in these mediums because if we are able to get return for data, you know, we, uh, there is a lot more which brands can do through linear TV because then it will be two-way talk. Uh, so those are few things which I think in future will definitely happen. Thank you, Ashish. I think uh, summing it up, what I hear from all three of you is increased penetration, I hear India shining, uh, higher GDP, which is going to lead to the growth, and also about content, uh, <coughs> sorry, content, uh, what you call distribution and creation. Uh, but, but coming to specific, this all is great to know, and obviously we are in agreement over here, but slightly deep diving into specifics, see, for example, in the last few years, we have seen one lever which draws, uh, which propels the growth of uh, the television industry. I'm not talking about that lever in Andheri. So what happens is, for example, if you look at last year, uh, sports was the category which drove the growth on television medium, right? Future, what is going to happen? Which are the areas, like we also saw impact in some years, we saw regional channels uh, coming up in some years, uh, what more? Yeah, I mean, broadly these categories. But if you go ahead in the next few years, I would like to hear from you on which are the categories which are actually going to drive this growth. Anybody can uh, take this, you know? Okay, I'll go first. Um, I would say sports will continue uh, to be one of the key growth levers. You know, if you look at uh, the key broadcasters, there are multiple of them, they have invested big monies in sports. Uh, so that is one aspect. And the other aspect that I would talk about is, there is just so much noise around premium audiences that is available on the big screen. I'm saying big screen, not necessarily linear television, right? Ever since the noise around connected TV has started, we have started seeing an increased interest from advertisers on the HD homes that linear television can reach out to. So in the last two years, if you look at it, just in the NCCS A cohort, you can see about 53% of growth in HD homes. And this comes with the benefit of the big TV, big screen effect. And it also delivers consistently even in the bath data. Right? Time spent, if you look at SD home versus HD homes, it continues to be equal or greater than the SD homes. So this is one segment that we would see in the coming years uh, would scale up or help us expand the ad space. Third point is something Ashish has already pointed out. There is a very large influencer economy right out there. Advertisers are increasingly wanting to have more and more influencers talking about their brands. If you look at our, the broadcast business or the linear television, the last two and a half decades, advertisers have been looking at us for the ad breaks. You come to us, to buy inventory from us. But our first identity is actually content and characters. And this content is built to bring audiences day after day. Something that is very difficult to aggregate. Aggregation of audiences day after day is not an easy challenge, easy, easy job anymore. 
At the same time, it also comes with characters that have great influence on consumers. They have the ability to change consumers' behavior. And we will see advertisers and brands using these content and characters more and more on linear TV. And the fourth point is something for, I think over a decade we have tried, but never really succeeded. Bringing a common currency for across TV and digital. Like you all have seen the presentation that Nagaraj put up. You can see that the more narrower the TG becomes, it becomes CPM becomes expensive. But the wider the TG is, it is far more economical than any other medium in the country. So it's important that we start calling out, not necessarily CPM, like he said, it's the completed view on television. If you start calling this out, advertisers will get to see what is the comparable CPM between television and digital, and not just advertisers, all of us for that matter. And that is when it would become very pronounced that the efficiency of television is not only about building reach at a rapid scale, it is also about doing it at a very economical manner. Lastly, you know, in the last few years, we've also seen, this is in one of my conversations with Sam that this came up. There has been an increasing trend of agency pitches on very, uh, you know, committing deflationary pricing. Right? Many examples, you know, all of you would be thinking of it at, at this point. I don't want to give examples, but at the same point, at the same time, we must remember that this has a massive, massive impact on television addicts. On one side, we talk about, oh, TV could have grown a little more, but at the same time, we're also to be blamed for it. So these are the few points that, you know, that come to my mind. Thanks, Abruta. I think the last point is also about demand supply, isn't it? I think that requires a very a different session to talk about uh, that way. But coming to the earlier point of integrated media, which you spoke about, I just want to know how integrated plans can actually increase the, uh, the addicts on television. I didn't understand that, to be honest. Integrated media plan. When you say, from a CPM perspective. Uh, so, for example, you know, the chart that he put up, you can see that if somebody is looking at, let's say, 2+, plus, you can say single-digit CPM or CPCV you can get on television. But this is not something that you can even get on digital, right? That the kind of number doesn't exist because it's a flat line. Any TG that you look at, the CPM or CPCV would become like four times of the CPM. But television comes at broader TG, much cheaper, single digit, narrower TG. It could become expensive, but at the same time, it can build reach at a rapid scale. We'll surely take this proposal to the digital mediums, don't worry. So thanks for the thoughts and Ashish, uh, I'll come to you on a very important aspect of television again, which is fragmentation of audiences. Uh, I'll throw some numbers out here. 900 plus channels on television, 578 channels monitored by bar. But if you look at uh, the share of viewership vis-a-vis -vis the share of revenue, it shows a very different story. And I'll tell you how. The top 75 channels in the country account for about 65% of the total viewership uh, in India. However, when it comes to revenue, the same top 75 channels account for, account for about 70% approximately of the revenue. And I'm, I'll tell you why I'm asking this, because one of the strengths of linear TV is the ability to build reach at higher frequencies. We all agree to it. We have seen it in the presentations, etc. And it's an established fact. Don't you think it's time for some bit of consolidation? Because yeah, what's happening today is, because of so many channels, uh, viewership obviously is getting fragmented. So we have to buy multiple channels to reach audiences. And probably it is not letting the TV industry also charge a premium for each. So for example, if one a rating gets consolidated in one channel, obviously you guys will you know get a better whatever CPRP, CPM for it. So don't you think? Uh, uh, maybe it's a question we, you might be not able to answer, uh, you know, uh, in the current context, but fundamentally, don't you think that fragmentation is a big issue uh, with, uh, uh, you know, in, when building uh, ad volumes? 
Okay. For, uh, firstly, let me ask you this. Uh, will you ask the same question to all the digital guys that don't fragment? Okay. Let me tell you, the data says linear TV medium is the most simplest way of entertainment. Okay. Still, TV uh, is easier to reach, easier to, uh, you know, what do you call, you know, search when it is going through either cable or this thing. So that is one about the searchability or the availability of the content, right? Whereas today, uh, you know, digital is, is a vast medium where searching itself takes a lot of time by the time you would have watched a half an hour show on TV. You know, so that's the way things goes as far as the consumer uh, convenience co is concerned. Now, coming to, um, you know, a vast number of channels which are not still giving you rating. See, yes, 75, 75 odd, 20, uh, you know, 80 odd channels gives you the majority of the reach. Uh, but, you know, you uh, in Sam's slide also and uh, Nagraj's slide also, you were talking about that we are unable to catch light viewers. Where do you find those light viewers? They are actually fleeting around on those channels. Okay, uh, unfortunately, when the media planning started, you have always looking at, when you plan on TV, you say, I want, ma you know, uh, uh, immediate reach, two plus, three plus in frequency and so much reach I want. And you want, you plan TV only for that. You're not planning for TV for light viewers and that's where you're missing these viewers. And those other 250 odd channels are providing you that. And that includes a lot of news channel in that. You know, news is giving you information as you go. And uh, on the TV, there are so many news breaks which are happening. If those channels are not available on TV, you think, uh, you know, uh, will that uh, be viable in terms from a consumer interest point of view also, one. Uh, then coming to, uh, you know, shutting those channels or consolidating those channels. There is another uh, point that, you know, TV uh, business or broadcast business is not, does not survive only on advertising. The, a large part of revenue comes from distribution or, or the subscription. And if those channels are available today in the regimes of NTO 2.0 or 2.0, you know, 3.0 today, each consumer is taking that channel by its choice, right? Hence, those are today standing and being distributed, which means there is somebody to pay for those channels, and if somebody is paying for that channel, which means somebody is viewing that channel, fine? Now, same thing, when you look at a premium audiences, you know, you stop looking at English uh, or niche such channels. If at, if, okay, the consumer may be small out there, or the number of consumers who are subscribing for that may be very small, but they are very discerning viewers, right? When you do those, uh, you know, targeted reach, uh, targeted, uh, you know, campaigns on a YouTube or, a, you know, some other channels, I think the way you should look at these niche channels is that you should look at that as a targeted audience, uh, you know, campaigns. And you can choose those channels for advertising. It is the advertisers... Uh, I would say, you know, uh, you know, distrust which has gone or ignorance which is actually hurting these channels, they deserve to have much more edX than what they are getting today. And that will propel the other, I mean, Amrita just mentioned HD is certainly come in fashion because, you know, connected TV is being talked about and people are vying for it. Half of the inventory was going highly some time back. Now, you know, there is demand for HDTV as well. Because suddenly you realized, oh, there was a premium viewer already sitting there. Why did I forget in my media plan? You know, but when connected TV, so something which is in fashion, so media planner has to start thinking that those will add to your total reach. And everywhere else on digital, the planning is done on your reach, not on only frequency. Because you put a two frequency cap, which means frequency is not, is a, it's not a buzzword on digital, right? It is all about the reach. It's the more number of impressions. If you build your plan on smaller channels, your impressions go up at much lower cost. You know, but I have a difference of opinion over here on, on what you said. See, it is all about reach, as you're saying rightly. 
but when you start adding this long tail channels, it is not adding to any incremental reach for our plan. See, ultimately the objective is to reach an X amount of target audience at an X amount of frequency. But when you start, like I said, beyond a the point, these channels do not add any significant reach. Hence, the consolidation question. It was not about whether uh, uh, you are getting distribution revenue from these channels and hence you should look at consolidation. It is purely from a planning point of view. So, uh, you, I, I mean, I, I also differ from your point of view because see, you are looking at when, I, I don't know how you are adding. If you are adding a Hindi niche channel to an Hindi plan, may not add the reach. But you may add a regional, you know, uh, niche channel to a, your other, this thing, it may add your reach. So really it depends upon, or an English channel or an infotainment channel. You know, it's not that you are not getting that viewer on uh, that particular uh, channel or a mass channel. But when he's watching those, uh, you know, unique content channel, his interest level is different. And I think it is also about the recognizability of your ad during those you know, content at the time when you are viewing that content. It also helps you. Otherwise, the same guy is watching 20 different things, but you are trying to catch him on YouTube, you are trying to catch him on a, you know, a, some a digital, you are publishing dig news, publishing digital site, or some other, uh, you know, similar OTT platform. It's the, I mean, argument can be the same, right? And as I said, that most important for us, the, uh, the long tail channel also add to the subscription revenue. Media planning, of course, we are invited to look at more sharply your media planning, but from a business sense, they do make sense because they're still giving us money because subscriber is paying for it. And if subscriber is paying for it, which means he's a discerning consumer, and you should not, you know, uh, leave him out from your media planning. That's an interesting point. Thank you for that. Uh, next, I'll ask you, Sandeep, about uh, what Amruta also mentioned in terms of the uh, CPM comparison. See, what we have seen is uh, there are lots and lots of small advertisers who are, uh, you know, advertising on the digital medium. You can pretty much, uh, you know, do a three, 3 lakh or a 5 lakh or a 10 lakh or a 15 lakh uh, plan and, you know, do some uh, reasonable activity on the digital medium. Uh, obviously, he cannot do it on the larger channels, television linear channels. Even regionally, for example, he cannot, you know, actually make any dent in or any uh, uh, presence felt, uh, to be honest. Uh, don't you think that you're losing out an opportunity of capturing those audiences? The second leg of the, of the point is, if you remember the Doordarshan, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, time, when uh, DD used to run its prime content in, I think, 7 to 10, uh, 10 o'clock time band in the evening, and on Sunday mornings, they used, to, they used to telecast all their bigger programs, Om Namah Shivai and of the world and Mahabharat of the world. In the afternoon, then they used to switch to the regional feeds. And then you used to have regional programming on the main national network channel. Can there be a possibility of doing something like this on a GC channel? See, for example, what we have observed is uh, mark, uh, in Hindi-speaking markets, in markets like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, which are core Hindi-speaking states, and markets like Maharashtra, West Bengal, Northeast, where a lot of content still is consumed in the local uh, language. Right? That's why you have all these regional channels. But if there is an opportunity which can be uh, created to advertise on national channels, on uh, rather uh, the GEC channels, wherein you have some regional feed, it can be an Avadi program or a Bhojpuri program or a Marathi program for that matter. Is this possible from a monetization perspective? And even from a technological point of view, I think, there was a split beam technology which allowed you to uh, telecast, uh, you know, local ads. And I'm sure this can be done for content also. But whether it, it is feasible or not is something we would like to hear from you. So first things first, uh, you said that the digital is able to control a lot of long tail advertisers. I think it's the biggest opportunity for TV. I strongly feel so it's the biggest opportunity for TV. Because those long tail advertisers, whenever they become to a certain critical size, to become big, they will need TV as a medium. So it's a cross-feeding mechanism in my mind. It's a flywheel which will be that at some point in time, and again going back to Sam's presentation, at some point in time, TV will uh, choke some, but some client's growth. So therefore, you will have to go out and use digital. At some point in time, when you have crossed a certain threshold of digital, you will need TV to go out and make yourself big. I think it's a fantastic time for both the mediums to keep feeding into each other. So, first things first is that. Uh, second thing is a little detour again. 
I think uh, what you were talking about, there is, and I, my personal opinion is that, uh, uh, again, I will go back and Vikram take the same example of Govardhangi. It's, uh, it's one of my most favorite examples these days. I have been talking about it in multiple forums. Uh, what it used to spend on, um, and also taking from uh, Mr. Puri what he talked about, there is only relevant thing which is called customer centricity. And in my mind, there are only three cohorts. One is what we telecast, which is our viewers. One is our clients. And other is our client's customer, who is our viewers. If you are able to create a web between these three, uh, you are home. A lot of TV solves will not happen only on TV and nobody knows it better than, I guess, you guys. The amount of work which we have done on Asian Paints with you guys, which is a TV solve is getting triggered somewhere else on a different ecosystem and the amount of, and people talk about the attribution of uh, uh, TV. So Madison came up with a proposition of Govardhangi and they took KBC as a sponsorship. The sponsorship, uh, in my mind, one of the most brave moves of them coming on board on the KBC uh, association. Uh, and I truly feel that uh, they had the guts in them to look for that kind of an association. They did a six weeks association. That six week association finally ended up into uh, 18 weeks. And what the client tells us, and what the client tells Madison, is that the client gets queries out of Haryana, the client gets queries out of uh, uh, Rajasthan, and the client says that I am getting queries that I want to take your uh, franchisee because we want uh, you to create a, f a business in these kind of markets. If this is not attribution, you know, the game ultimately will be only played with one thing, which is what Mr. Puri was talking about, which is customer centricity. Gone are the days that we used to be traditionally in our mode of broadcast, that what we will telecast is what everybody will consume and what a planner will buy and what at the end of the day we will only fluctuate on entry versus exit. Game is about evolution. And if anybody has to go out and be relevant into the piece of business, and yes, Mr. Puri, when you were talking about the KBC, uh, Shubaram Kiya Jai, I mean, we, the, we were the ones who did that association because at that point in time, you, your creator was talking about Shubaram. And we wanted to take that as the pulse and wanted to create a narrative. And therefore, every time when Mr. Bachchan walked into the set of KBC, he said that, Ab game ka Shubaram karte. And every time there was a winner, for him to get a high point was not only money. Cadbury was a moment of gratification at that point in time. If you have got this pulse that there is a client and there is a customer and there is a viewer and I will create a, amongst these three cohorts, I will create a interconnectivity, whether you are doing digital, whether you are doing TV, you are in the game and nobody can get you out of the game. TV will see its exponential growth, not for everybody for relevant people who are able to give relevant solutions, but not for everybody. And what you were talking about, the only thing which I have learned in recent time is that everything is possible. So what you were talking about, I mean, that's something that from a content side, from a advertising side, we must should explore to figure out where is the next growth phase. Growth is not going to come on the table. We'll have to go and walk to the table where the growth is, but there is ample, ample and ample growth for anyone and every one of us. That's good to hear. I'll just add to him what I think today television is already, you know, uh, tapping the long tail. And it is by, you know, launching all these uh, each regional market channels. Uh, so there are regional focus channels which are uh, contributing to the growth of uh, long tail businesses. And especially when you, you know, said right now there are so many channels which don't add reach is because you're looking at an all India plan. But there is one channel who is possibly working in Uttar Pradesh as, and primarily those are news channels or very unique content channels which are addressing that region specific content opportunity. You know, they are the one who are getting those long tail channels and they may not even feature in your plan of things. And hence you say that my media plan is not making sense. But here is that guy for him that channel is making sense. And which is why you see, still see the mushrooming growth of, you know, more and more channels. Avinash said there are two channels who just launched recently in news channels, right? So why are they launching? They see some, uh, you know, money on the table. Obviously, that is why they're coming. So there is a long tail development which is happening 
across the market. In fact, this financial year, there is a huge retail advertising growth which has happened. You know, while the large advertisers have held back their monies or not really grown that, but there is a lot of adex growth which has happened from the retail and Amruta would, you know, possibly agree to me because they also have a huge bouquet of regional channels there. Uh, so I think that is where the long tail business is getting arrested. Point taken. Yeah, uh, Mol, you asked two questions actually. One is the SME part of it. Uh, if I were to look at it, in fact, I admire what digital has done for these smaller businesses. And that is the big value that it has added to the media addicts. And if somebody has to a small boutique in a really small town, and uh, I think Gaurav is sitting here, you know, what a Facebook can actually do for that particular brand is it can reach out to that smaller cohort of consumers that it is targeting. This possibly is not something that television can reach out to. But at the same time, what we must remember is the same Meta or Google or YouTube, our characters are also present over there. They are big influencers. Like the point that I mentioned earlier, if we were to look at, if we were to use these characters and content to actually help the SMEs to build their businesses in their respective smaller geographies, maybe on linear television it can't do. But the assets that is, it's content, and its characters can do, but on digital, right? Having said that, the last, you know, like uh, Ashish mentioned, I represent uh, the largest regional network, linear network in India. We have brands that we have acquired in the last 10 years, but these brands existed like for the last 25 years. Asianet is a, a good example. There is a very large regional enterprises adex base that we have in these markets. Kerala's ad revenue is in fact you know, fueled by the local enterprises. They're only available in Kerala. They're not available in the rest of the state. Similarly, some of these brands, right from the beginning, like Kalyan Jewelers, Malabar Gold, so many of these brands, Panduja Kasturi, all of them started out and built these brands on television. Maybe with just one store in a town in Kerala, Trishur, Kalyan Jewelers used to advertise on television. Today, it has more than 100 showrooms across the country and outside of, the, outside of India as well. Tamil Nadu is another big example. You know, I would give credit to Sun Network as well. Over 30% of our ad revenue comes from the local enterprises. So television, wherever you have a very strong regional product, you are able to have a good adex contribution from local enterprises. Maybe this is something that we haven't been able to crack in, in the HSM geography. Considering it is a very, very large geography and there are still advertisers available or targeting like smaller geographies within HSM. This is something maybe, it's an input from you, this question possibly would open up our minds and we possibly would come up with some uh, solutions. Yeah, and uh, there was another question on fragmentation. Uh, no, you asked one more question about... Uh, uh, no, long tail and... Yeah. Yeah, that I think, you know, Sandeep, uh, I agree with him. We are known for consumer centricity, right? And we do tons of research before we take any show out on air. Like for every five show that you see on air, another five show gets rejected. Right at the story stage, shoot stage, pilot episodes are created. We take it to the consumer. They don't like it. We have to alter it. Sometimes that alteration itself don't work. So the level of consumer focus that we have, it is huge. So we don't really believe in simply dubbing and giving a show in multiple languages. Instead, we would like to create content in their respective languages. Like India is many Indias. You know, it's culturally very nuanced. There are shows that travel across states. There are multiple examples that I can give you. There is a show called Srimoyi, which originated in Bengal. It went to every single market across India. It is in Hindi as Anupama, Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada, all of it. All of these combined or cumulative audiences, if you look at it, the same story must be reaching out to about 150 million people consistently. And that is the power of content, story, only if you make it in the, in the manner the consumer wants to see, in the language they want to see, in the form of relatable characters. So from that point of view, technology is available. 
But the objective, we need to be a little more clear whether it is this way or some other way that we should look at. As anticipated, we're running out of time because I knew this is not going to uh, be wrapped up in the stipulated time. But just coming to the end of it, Amruta, this is for you. And I know you're very passionate about, about, the, about the comparison between linear versus digital. And unfortunately, it is inevitable at this point of time. Uh, you touched upon the CTV part uh, briefly. But from an overall reach perspective, see, for example, we know the YouTube numbers are in excess of 450 million. Then you have each and every OTT platform coming and talking about, you know, the re, uh, average monthly users in excess of 100 million. So arithmetically, if you just combine all of all of these, it looks like, hey, you know, uh, digital video is kind of uh, coming to the reach of television, the linear television part. How do you combat this here? Do we need to combat? Is my counter question to you. So. See, inherently, you know, that question. Because these questions question, are being asked now. Absolutely. Maybe, I know, know I hear it like every single meeting that I go to, right? And like I said, there is just so much noise around uh, digital, you know, uh, proliferation and connected TV and multiple other things. But the fact is, it should be asked in a slightly different way. If YouTube has 450 million consumer base, television has 900 million. Why are we forgetting that it is, it is incrementally adding another 450 million, right? And are we assuming that OTT is actually incremental over o YouTube? I don't think so, no, not. right? So the reach, fundamentally, if you look at it, it is that 450 million. And you know, digital deserves what it deserves. It is also reaching out to consumers. It's not that, you know, but the fact is going back to the pricing, how economical it is, right? We've also seen and the brand building capability that television has, the aggregate audiences that it can bring, the collective audiences that it can bring, it lifts brand conversations, it, it aids brand memorability, and it would also translate into business outcomes. The sure. challenge that we are facing or what we have not done is, he mentioned in the conversation that we have not really claimed attribution. Right? The last mile player always gets the attribution. Yeah. I would really like to thank uh, again Amruta, Sandeep and Ashish for joining this session. We could have loved to go on for at least an hour more. <laughs> but uh, I think it was very, very insightful. And as, as I said, hearing it from the three industry leaders gives the, that kind of difference. So huge Absolutely. round of applause for all three of them. And thank you so much. <laughs>